Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. If this is your first time here, welcome to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. And today, I just want to say what's up. Because today, we're reviewing Tin Friggin' Cup. Ten year. Is this my first ever product from Tin Cup? Yup. I was at a local liquor store and I was browsing their shelves to see what was new when the nice lady who takes my money every week was like, have you ever tried this? No, I have not. And she was like, well, I've heard really good things. And I was like, from who? What? Is there some whiskey taster in town that I don't know about? What's his name? What's his address? Because I need to pay him a visit and beat him over the head with a shovel and bury him in his backyard. This town's not big enough for two whiskey tasters. She talked me into it. I slid her my extra high interest credit card and she was like, that'll be $55. And I was like, it'll be 75 by tomorrow. <laughs> high interest credit card joke. America. America. This six-sided bottle is a sexagon. It says tin cup here. It says Jess Graber, founder. It says tin cup again here. Then it says cut with Rocky Mountain water, so you know it's good. Tin cup again there. And then it says tin cup 10 is an American whiskey matured in white American oak barrels with a number three char and aged for a minimum of 10 years before being cut to proof with Rocky Mountain water. Tin Cup is named after the mining pioneers and the tin cups from which they drank their whiskey, which is why they put a tin cup on top. 750 milliliters, product of USA, distilled in Indiana. That's right, this is a high rye 10 year MGP bourbon that they've watered down with Rocky Mountain water to 84 proof. It's got a dangly tag on it, so you know that there's more reading ahead. I made tin cup in honor of the mining pioneers and the tin cups from which they drank their whiskey. Tin cup is distilled from a blend of corn rye and malt barley, cut with Rocky Mountain water and aged in American white oak casks for a minimum of 10 years. It's got the mellow base of bourbon with some added kick from the rye. Hope you like it, Jess Graber. Founder. Is 10 year old MGP still really good if it's got a whole bunch of water added to it? Took this baby for a little spin, got it a little bit dizzy, a little bit of an SJ. Whoa. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, oh my god. The nose on this bourbon is spectacular. Wow. Dark fruits. Dates. The world's best raisins. Cinnamon. Black cherry. A sweet sugary oak. Vanilla extract. A little pepper. A little pie crust. A little pie crust action. This smells like a liquid alcohol fruit pie that would win an award at a World Fruit Pie Festival of pies and greatness. Probably, and by probably I mean for sure, the most surprising nose I've ever smelled on a bourbon. Literally was not expecting this at all. It smells older than 10 years, but the oak is so perfectly balanced in with the fruitiness and the sweetness. Hey Matt, why don't you shut up and drink it? Okay, I see your point and I agree. Time to drink this 84 proof whiskey. Tin cup, 10 year, down the hatch. Wow. 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 Oh. <clears throat> Sp 
spin me in circles and slap my sphincter. That is so good. That is so, so good. That is so good. That is an 84 proof bourbon. It's, I mean, by far, this is by far the best 80 to 90 proof bourbon that I can think of. There's so much character and so much complexity and so much depth and so much, there's so much happening on the palate. There's so many things going on. At 84 proof, I can't believe it. The second sip was a little bit thinner than the first sip. It didn't do as much in my mouth, but still, what a remarkable pour. What a remarkable pour. It's fruity, it's spicy, it's got depth, it's got character, it's got viscosity for being 84 proof. It's got a little viscosity. It's got a hell of a finish. The finish is just that nice, lingering, perfect oak that is just the right poke for the oak. You know what I'm saying? This oak is no joke. For an 84 proof bourbon, this oak might be the opposite of a joke. This oak is nonfiction. If oak is the butt stuff of bourbon, then this isn't even a romance novel. This is a romance documentary because this shit is real. In the year 2022, when I buy a $50 bottle of bourbon, usually, usually I am disappointed. Usually I am disappointed. I'm so happy to finally be surprised in a good way, on a whim. I don't remember the last time I bought a bottle on a whim, got it home and was like actually shocked at how good it was. This is by far the best bourbon under 90 proof that's just sitting on a shelf somewhere. And unless somebody can put in the comments below a better one that I'm not thinking of, then I'm gonna stand by that. This is freaking dog shit crazy. If you live somewhere that gets a whole bunch of snow all winter from like October through April and you just get snow, just get hammered with snow over and over again every single day for months on end and you have a dog, when spring finally rolls around in May and the snow melts and you see all the dog shit in the lawn, you're like, good grief, this is surprising. This is surprising. That's what I thought when I tasted this. I was like, I didn't know that they made shit like this. This is so good. So good. Um, I should probably give it a score. Should probably give it a score. Tin cup, 10 year American whiskey, which is actually a straight bourbon, receives a score from me tonight of Eight point six. It's an eight point six. Eight point six for an eighty-four proof bourbon is crazy. That's crazy. An eight point six. It's it's exceptional. It's literally an exceptional bourbon. But tin cup. Listen. By the way, hear me out. I I live over on the western slope here. Just curious. Do you have any of this at like cask strength at your place? Do you have any of this at cask strength at your place? Can I swing by and try some? Can I just swing by and try just a little bit? Because this at cask strength would probably be one of the best bourbons ever bourboned, if you know what I mean. But even at 84 proof, my mind is blown. So congratulations, Tin Cup. I would like to stop by your place and give you a high five and a hug and a nux and a slap on the ass if that's okay with you. And if not, then that's all right. And we'll just stick to the nux. I could drink a whole bottle of this stuff and probably still, I'd probably be pretty shit faced. Probably be pretty slammered.
My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on breaking down cardboard boxes when you receive them. Because once they start adding up, they start adding up quick. And what what started as one box you didn't take care of quickly turns into an entire garage full of cardboard boxes. And those cardboard boxes aren't empty. They're filled with like foam and packing peanuts and more cardboard, cellophane, plastic wrap, bubble wrap. And then they keep adding up and adding up. And before you know it, you have an entire day's work ahead of you. And then, and then there's nothing worse than being 10 hours into breaking down cardboard boxes with an X-Acto knife when you're eight ounces of whiskey deep and that exacto knife is getting dull. Just take care of them when you get it. And again, I feel like I'm talking to myself here because, wow, that was a lot of cardboard. And good grief.